Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be looking at one of the most important natural resources on earth, that is the energy resource. Now, energy is essential for the existence of mankind. We know that even in our bodies, to do any work, we have to have an input of energy. Even globally, when we see, energy is essential for the existence of mankind. It is required for all the developmental activities. In fact, they say that a country's progress is indicated by the energy resources it has. So when we see globally, the energy type which is being used maximum or the consumption is increasing, has been increasing over the years, has, than, has been that of the electricity. Electricity consumption, most of the electricity production comes from coal and oil. But then now a lot of clean energy sources are also being set up in many of the countries. But when we see the electricity consumption over the global scale, China accounts for almost 24% of the global consumption, followed by US, India, Russia and Japan. And there have been energy needs which are growing day by day, mainly for the industrial processes like mining, transportation, lighting, heating and cooling in buildings or heating and cooling of equipments in an industry. All of these need energy. Not only that, the population has been increasing. So that population increase has led to an energy deficit. We don't have enough energy to cater to all the population that in the, in the world. We have been having a lot of lifestyle changes as well. A lot of appliances have entered our regular domestic usage. So we have appliances like ACs, fridges, other ele electrical appliances in the kitchen. All of these have been added into our homes over a period of few years. These goods, these consumer goods also use energy, not only in their usage, but also for their manufacture. These appliances are pulling in a lot of energy. Now in India, 80% of the coal is consumed by the fertilizer industry, aluminum industry, textile, cement, iron and steel industry, paper industry. These are the industries which are pulling in or which are using up 80% of the coal and 70% of the electrical energy. And generally in India, the main sources of energy are coal, oil, gas and we also obtain energy from water. But if we see in India, the highest per capita consumption in 2018-19 report was from the Dadra and Nagar Haveli and also from Gujarat, Goa, Haryana, Punjab. These are some of the states which have highest per capita consumption of energy. Between 2005 and 2030, it has been projected that energy consumption will expand by 50%. So what does that mean? It means that we need to come up with newer, cleaner sources of energy, which are more long lasting, not like the fossil fuels that we are using now, which are dying out quickly. We need other sources which can be used for a longer period of time. Now, energy resources can be divided as renewable and non-renewable resources. That is based on their continual utility. We can divide them as those which can be you know, generated continuously, those are called as the renewable resources. So you can say that they are virtually inexhaustible because they are being, re even if we use them up, they are coming back quickly. They are being generated quickly or they are renewable. They get renewed soon. They are also the clean sources of energy, one of the cleanest sources because their carbon emission is very less. So this includes the energy like solar energy. We have wind energy, tidal energy, all of their uh, the, you know, the emissions from these energy sources are very, very less in comparison to the non-renewable resources. Also, these energy resources are good for the earth because they are sustainable or they help in making sure that even the future generations get these energy resources. On the other hand, we have non-renewable energy resources which cannot be generated once they are exhausted. And even if they are generated, their rate of renewal is very, very less in comparison to their rate of generation. So they are present in limited quantity and that's why you call them as non-renewable. Or Additionally, they are not at all environment friendly. Once they are, you know, they are burnt or once you use these energy resources, a lot of toxic gases are released, which have been known to uh, cause global warming, which have been known to affect the health of organisms. So they are not environment friendly. Now, what this calls for is to you know, bring out the different energy sources apart from non-renewable sources like the fossil fuels apart from these. So non-renewable resources includes the coal, petroleum, natural gas. Apart from these, we need to come up with more and more of renewable energy sources or alternate energy sources, which are environment friendly. Now, these alternate energy sources are very much environmental friendly, but then they are not being popularly used because they have a few disadvantages as well. So we'll just look quickly at the advantages and disadvantages of alternate energy sources. 
The main advantage is that they cause little or absolutely no pollution. So they're very clean, like I told you earlier. They are renewable, which we have already discussed. And usually they do not form any harmful byproducts. But then why are they not in popular culture? The reason being, they are very expensive to set up. To set up a geothermal plant, you have to pump in a lot of money. And many of the nations don't have that kind of money. So the setup itself is very, very expensive. Not only that, <clears throat> if they are not properly handled, they can lead to a lot of hazardous byproducts. So what happens is in geothermal energy, for example, when we dig into the earth, a lot of mineral and gases are escaping into the environment. And if we don't do the drilling properly, these could be gases which are really toxic and which can, you know, kill or harm the people around. So they are hazardous if you do not handle them properly. You need to have a lot of technical knowledge to handle or to set up a plant of alternate energy sources. They are not available throughout the year, many of them. For example, solar energy. In some countries, the sun shines on during the summer and autumn months maybe. But during winters, it is very, very cold and you hardly get the sun's energy. In such places, something like solar energy would not be viable. So they may not be available throughout the year. They may not be available throughout the day. And that is why these alternate energy sources are not preferred. But keeping all these differences aside, we have been able to come up with a lot of alternate energy sources which can be used at least in one way or the other. Maybe you can mix it up with the regular energy source. If not going completely clean, at least you can reduce the dependence on coal, petroleum and natural gas. So let us have a look at the different types of alternate energy sources. The first one is biomass energy. Biomass is basically the mass of an organism. Biomass energy refers to energy that is being obtained from a living organisms. Now here what is done is usually the biomass is directly converted into energy by a process called as gasification. So there is biomass feedstock that is taken. It is heated with a controlled amount of oxygen and then it converts that into energy. Usually we try to obtain electricity from there. So what you can see here is this is the this is a bio uh, gasification plant in uh, Maui in Hawaii where sugarcane is getting converted into electricity. This is the, these are the canola fields. Canola fields, canola is a plant which is used to produce biodiesel. So it is diesel that you are obtaining from the canola plant. Biofuel that is in the form of biodiesel has been used in US, in Canada, Brazil, France, UK, Ireland, Poland, South Africa. These are some countries where the biodiesel is in use currently. In India also, they tried to bring in biodiesel, but then the plant yield was very less. So it was not viable for us to use biodiesel here. There are a lot of petro crops like the uh, Jatropha plant, which have a high content of hydrocarbon in their saps or in their latex. And that is why it is good to use these plants to produce biodiesel because when we put them to high temperature and pressure, they convert that particular hydrocarbon into petroleum hydrocarbon, which we can use. So what I have shown you here, are some of the examples of biomass feedstock. Basically, biomass, which is lignocellulosic in nature, you do not use it for food or for feed, but then you can convert it into biodiesel. So you can see there are coconut shells over here. There's rice husk, there's switchgrass, there's um, jatropha plant. All of these plants or plant materials can be converted into biodiesel. The second method of using biomass energy for, uh, you know, biomass for energy is where we use agricultural and urban waste, which can be converted into biogas. This again is something that is being very popularly used in India. So we have the rural areas, especially in rural areas, it has been very, very successful because these areas have a lot of agricultural and animal waste. And then this is fed into a biogas reactor from where we get a lot of energy. We can use that biogas, which is basically a mix of methane, carbon dioxide and other gases for in our kitchens or for running certain, you know, devices and equipments. So what you see over here, this is sludge from municipal solid waste, which is then transported into tanks or, you know, into containers, into biogas plants where bacteria feed on them to produce biogas. What you see here, the last one is algal fuel. So algae are also being now utilized instead of using plants, they are trying to use bio, they are trying to produce biodiesel from algae. This is also being done in many, many research labs. Even in India, we have a lot of research labs working on this to produce algal biofuel. This was about biomass energy. Let's look at the next one. That is solar energy. 
Now, India being a tropical region, we have a very high potential for solar energy because we have a lot of sunlight coming in and, you know, the solar energy is very, very clean because it doesn't change the total energy balance of the earth and there's zero pollution. The problem, the only problem with solar energy is that you need a large area of land to set up these solar panels. So the solar panels have to be spread out. Then they absorb the solar sun's energy, the solar energy and convert it into electricity. What you see here are two case studies where very ingeniously they have used the solar panels. This one is wherein huge canals have been covered with the solar panels. So the entire canal in this is in Gujarat, entire canal has been covered with the solar panel. Now this serves a dual purpose. First of all, we didn't have place. So now we have solved the problem of space. There's a canal that is running over a long length of area. We have covered it with the solar panel. So the entire area can be used for generation of electricity. Secondly, because we have covered the you know, canal with the solar panel, the water below will not only help in cooling, but it also helps in water conservation because the water does not get evaporated easily. So the canal retains more water. So this is one way in which both the purposes have been served. The canal is always having water plus the solar panels are also kept cool and we have enough space for keeping the solar panels. What you see over here, the second picture, this is of the Kochi airport. So Kochi airport in Kerala is the first airport to completely operate on solar power. What they have done is they have installed a lot of solar panels or around 40 megawatt of solar energy is being produced in that airport. And due to this, they have been able to completely remove their dependence on electricity from they are not getting any electricity from outside. Entirely, the airport is running on solar panels. So we have you can see there are a lot of you know solar pho photovoltaic installations on the rooftops, carport along the runway on any land which is not required for airport operations. For example, this they have installed solar panels which are being used to run the or for the daily airport operations. The third one is hydroelectricity. Like we know, hydroelectricity is wherein you use the energy of flowing water for production of electricity. Now here, this will work mainly in hilly areas or highland areas. They are the most suitable for this. This is very commonly used in India, like in the states of Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, in Jammu Kashmir, Meghalaya, Tripura, Sikkim, all of these and many other states as well have hydroelectricity or they actually, in fact, for that matter, Kerala mainly depends on hydroelectric generation of electricity for its purposes. So hydroelectricity is where we use the flow of water and then that water runs a turbine from which we are producing electricity. What I have shown you here, this is the Sharavati hydropower plant in Karnataka, which is over the Sharavati river. It's in Shimoga district. What is shown here is the Almati Dam. Almati Dam and hydropower plant uh, is over the Krishna river in Bijapur district of Karnataka. And this one is the Three Gorges Dam, which is on the Yangtze River in China. It is the largest hydroelectricity station. The next one is wind energy. This is also a type of energy wherein, uh, in which India has invested a lot of uh, money and we are producing wind energy. In fact, the state of Tamil Nadu is the leader in wind energy production. So here we use the kinetic energy of wind to move the blades of the wind turbine, as you can see over here. And when these blades move from that, from there, we are producing electricity. The initial installation cost is very high, but then this is also a very clean source of energy. So in the states of Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Lakshadweep, we have been able to set up huge wind farms from where a lot of electricity generation is happening. In fact, the largest wind farm in India is in Muppandal, which is in the Kanyakumari district in Tamil Nadu. This is the largest onshore wind farm that is it's on the land. What, you, what I have shown you here, this one, this is the Hansi project. This is the world's largest offshore wind farm. That is, it is located, located away from the shore in UK. And this is the biggest offshore wind farm. This one, what I have shown you here, these three pictures are of the Mupandal wind farm, which is in Kanyakumari in India. The next type of energy is geothermal energy. Now, geothermal energy is wherein we are using the thermal energy inside the earth's crust and then using that to produce electricity or to produce energy. Now, this is a type of energy which is not there. No functional plant is there in India. They are, a par, a, you know, a pact has been signed recently last year and the drilling has started in 2022 in Ladakh. So there is one geothermal plant being built in Ladakh. This is the proposed plant at Ladakh which on which work is being done by ONGC. But otherwise, we don't have a functional plant. 
and the countries which have been using their thermal energy are include indonesia philippines there's a, a geothermal plant there are many geothermal plants in us iceland turkey so what it requires is that we need to drill into the earth and then use the energy from the earth to produce electricity what you see here this is the geothermal plant in california it is the largest plant with 15 power plants inside this one is in Philippines. Philippines is one of the world's top producers of geothermal power because of its location. So, it's Philippines is located along the ring of fire zone of Pacific volcanoes, which means it has a lot of energy held inside the Earth's crust and they are using it to their advantage. The next type of energy is tidal energy. Tidal energy is again a type of energy which has not yet been you know, used on a commercial scale in India. Here, what we use is the energy of the flowing tide to run turbines to run the you know uh, to run the paddles as you can see over here the system of turbines and paddles to harness the tidal energy that's what we do the countries which are mainly using tidal energy include philippines south korea there's france russia us these are the countries which have been using tidal energy like you can see over here this is a tidal power station in france and what you see here this is the siva lake tidal power station in south korea it's the world's largest tidal power installation so when the tide is high, water will flow from the sea into the Siva lake and then it will generate the electricity. So, these are some of the different types of alternate energy sources. What we need to remember is that these alternate energy sources are very important to be invested in right now because these are our future. Our non-renewable sources like petroleum and natural gas or coal are going to run out. They are already, they are already facing an energy crisis in the world. So, we need to make sure that we slowly shift, if not fully, at least partially towards alternate energy so that we can retain these energy sources even for the future generation. I hope this video was useful to all of you. Hope to see you all in the next one as well. Thank you.